Good morning, Church. Uh, what a privilege to meet up with you this morning and to be able to share God's Word with you. Uh, it's particularly uh, such a blessing to be uh, back in Durham after all of this time away uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, and what an amazing uh, couple of months it's been. Uh, our last trip out from Qatar was actually to Durham for the uh, conference and we just managed to get back into the country uh, and then I've, uh, this is the first time we've actually traveled out and it's been back to England, back to Durham, which uh, in itself is actually quite lovely and interesting. Uh, and so uh, we're just gonna uh, just be sharing briefly with you this morning, uh, as I also will be in person sharing in the church later on. Uh, but for this online service, I'm just going to bring a, a short greeting and an encouragement uh, from God's Word. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the privilege to gather together as your people. Father, we acknowledge that you are a good God. We acknowledge that you've been good to us. We acknowledge that in all things we can give you thanks because we know that is your will for us. But most importantly, we give you thanks because we know that you are good and your mercies endures forever. So Father, we thank you as you've given us the privilege to come together, both for the online as well as meeting in person. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this privilege uh, and this opportunity, Lord. Lord, as we share your word together, just to encourage one another, I pray, will you bless the entrance of your word into each of our hearts. Let it give us light. Let it give us understanding. Let me bring encouragement and strengthening for our spirit man, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you anoint our ears to hear and you give us grace to be doers of your word and not just hear us alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, uh, lovely greetings from uh, my wife Tayo and from the children. Uh, Tayo was in the UK briefly uh, just to drop off the kids off uh, at the various uh, uh, learning institution. Uh, and she's back in Qatar because she's got to, uh, she's gone back to work. So I'm, I'm just staying around for another couple of weeks to make sure everybody's fully settled. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to be sharing with us from the book of First Corinthians chapter 15. And I want us to look at a verse there in verse 58. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse uh, 58 is my main verse, but I might just ring uh, some extra verses later. It says, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I'll repeat that. It says, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I feel this is a really timely reminder and a timely word uh, from God's words to us. Because if there is any uh, time, at least in our lifetime, uh, and for many of us, because none of us have experienced anything like what we've gone through in the last uh, year and a bit, um, it's that time to really reflect uh, upon the subject of, of standing firm and, and reappraising actually where we are and where things have been. It's been a very different situation uh, in different ways for different peoples, but everybody's been impacted by one way or the other. And uh, the church has been impacted, the society has been impacted, we've been impacted as individuals. Uh, and for me, one of the striking things that I was thinking about this morning's uh, message is just a reflection that in some ways this pandemic has uh, become almost like a searchlight shining into our hearts, helping us to reevaluate and to think about all of our priorities and all of the things that we thought were important, and to reevaluate and think about all the things we do and why we do it and for what purposes. And especially as a church family, as we begin to re-engage back and as we begin to come out of this lockdown and begin to try to come back to a measure of normalcy, I think it's a good point to pause and to ask ourselves and to reflect and ask that questions. Uh, and I remember that scripture in, in Psalm where, where the psalmist says, Search my heart, O Lord, uh, and show me if there be any evil unbelieving way in me, and show me your path everlasting. Uh, and that emphasis there is about searching of hearts. 
And the psalmist, you know, was saying to the Lord, I, I want you to cast your light, cast the scrutiny of your spirit upon my heart. Search my heart. Help me to see what is the motivation and what are the hidden hinges of my heart. So it's not just about what we do from a surface point of view. It's not just the activity. It's not just the performance. But the psalmist recognized that whatever we do for the Lord, it's not just what we do, but how we do it and with what heart we do it is so important. And the psalmist's passion for the Lord and desire for God was so, so encompassing that he actually cried to the Lord. And I think that's a challenging statement if you think about it. To actually ask the Lord to cast a scrutiny upon your life and to Lord to do a forensic examination of your heart and to reveal the state of your heart to you. And I thank God because that was not a desire or a statement of asking the Lord to do that because of fear of condemnation and judgment. It was an understanding of one who had a relationship with the father and who knew the heart of the father and who knew that this father was invested in him and wants to bring him to the fullness of all that he has for him. So that cry by the psalmist to the Lord to examine his heart and to show him was not a fear of condemnation, but he knew that in the Lord revealing his heart to him, the same Lord will enable him to be able to live out his land and his purposes. And his greater desire was to please God. And the Bible says concerning him that his heart was for the Lord. David's heart was centered upon the Lord. He, he knew and God knew that his desire was for him. But he knew to, in order to fulfill that and to do that properly, he needed the Lord to come and expose and show him what was going on. And I think in some ways this pandemic has been like a searchlight and has beamed upon all of our hearts. And I don't know about you, but for me, it has opened up a lot of deep things. And it's made me see, in some ways, some of the issues of my heart. And it's made me then reevaluate why I do what I do, what drives me, what is the, the desire behind it, what is the motivation behind it, how pure is my motives, how much of what I do is about the Lord, how much of what I do is about myself, and how much about what I do is just outward performance, how much is my heart in what I do. But more importantly, it also forced me to look unto God and to ask God, almost like the psalmist Christ, to say, search my heart, Lord. Because you know the deepest desire of my heart, and I'm sure for every one of us as committed children of God who have given their heart to the Lord, whose emphasis and desire is for the Lord to come and rule and reign in us, the deepest desire of our heart is that our lives will be pleasing to him. Because the Bible says, for this purpose, Jesus was manifested. He destroyed the works of the enemy. He set us free from the power of sin in releasing us to that life of righteousness and holiness so that we can live a life that is pleasing to him all the days of our lives. And so when we look at the scripture there, he says to us and he reminds us, as the Lord, and I felt in some ways this pandemic has, has, has been like a beam light upon our hearts and has shown us what is really driving us. What is our motivation? What is our confidence? You know, when I looked at that passage we just read, I love the translation we say, you know, don't be shakable. You know, be, don't, don't allow anything to shake you. Don't allow anything to dislodge you. You begin to hear what's like discouragement. You hear what's like despondency. You hear what's like, you know, like, like, like feeling defeated or feeling, or, or feeling discouraged. But in all of this situation, it causes us to search our hearts and to, to, to evaluate our relationship with the Lord and the intimacy of the Lord with us as he leads us as a people. And here, the psalmist, as we, as we read in this passage, he says, in, in all of these things, it brings this encouragement. He said, despite all that has gone over in this, over a year and in this pandemic situation, we need to remember why we are who we are and why we do what we do and whose we are. Because ultimately we belong to him. Our lives are hidden in Christ, in God, and we belong to him. And as we remember whose we are, we focus on his purposes, his desire, his counsel, and his plan for our lives. And over and above the challenges of life, that causes us to then refocus and ask ourselves, 
Are we still doing what he expects of us? Are we living out in his purposes, in his counsel, and in his plan for our lives? And uh, this passage says again, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And so the question there is, am I standing firm? Or am I on a wobbly state? Have I been able to find that sure anchor? I, I love that hymn which is, we have an anchor that keeps our soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasting to the rock which cannot move, grounded, firm and deep in the Savior's blood. In this whole pandemic situation, have you been able to find that firmness for your faith? Or are you finding that it's like walking in sand rather than standing upon that sure rock? And then he's reassuring us and he says we need to stand firm and make sure that nothing moves us. We, we have an anchor that keeps us secure, fastened to him. And we give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord because we know that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. And one of the things I love about this passage, if we, if we go just slightly further and, and we read it, you know, uh, the earlier there it talks about how our perishable bodies are going to disappear and how we will inherit a new body and how there will be a trumpet call and how the dead in Christ will rise up and how we will meet up with him. And he reminds us about the resurrection. And he says that the surety and the guarantee and the assurance of knowing that our labor in the Lord is not in vain is because we believe in the resurrection and we believe in the life hereafter. And we know that this life is not the end for us. And that is the victory that even death, because the whole, this whole pandemic sums up in death. When we look at how many people have been infected, how many people have died endlessly, how many, you know, how many devastation have happened. You know, the ultimate weapon of this pandemic is death. And yet the Bible says even that weapon in the finality of it and in the what that Christ has done, that victory has even been secured that that death will be overcome. And the victory that Christ gives us is even victory over death. So that whether we live or we die, we know it belongs to him. And the time comes when everyone, those who have died and those who are alive, will be regenerated, will be transformed, and will come into a newness of God's kingdom and of his purposes. And that is his plan for us. And therefore, he's encouraging us and he's reminding us. Because of the resurrection life, because we know that there is another life. We know that is eternal life. We know that our life does not just constitute alone in all of these afflictions. It says because of that and because it reminds us of that, it says irrespective of what has happened, let us reevaluate our work, but let none of these things move or shift our focus from the work and the purposes that God has for us. So as we begin to re-engage back, as we begin to think back about our labor for the Lord, one of the things this pandemic has thrown out is the significance of community. And we see how that we're not created for isolation and to be by ourselves. And we have seen the importance of community rallying around, linking up with one another, caring for one another, looking after one another. And as we begin to reopen and begin to re-engage back in the community of God's people, we have even a higher, hopefully, understanding of God's wisdom when he calls us people into community and when he calls us to work together as a body of Christ. And where he has, by his wisdom, designed that all the purposes of God will be worked through on earth through his body. And as we come together as a community of God's people, it reminds us that as we come into that community, there is a labor of love and a continuing labor of love that we need to give ourselves to. But then it's also encouraging us and telling us this labor of love is important and is significant because it's as unto the Lord. And everything we do for the Lord, every labor of love for him and for his purposes, he says, it is never wasted because God is mindful and God will reward all that we do for him. Give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And so as I bring this message to a close, I just want to uh, encourage us. Uh, and just to say, you know, we need to ask ourselves, what is the Lord calling us into in this season? What is the Lord demanding of you? You know, for some of us, the, the challenge of 
uh, not being gathered in church, not being able to serve one another uh, physically and all some of the other activities might think, do we really need that? Uh, but I want you to ask the Lord to search your heart. Ask the Lord to uh, remind you. Ask the Lord to show you afresh. Give you a fresh vision of what his plan, what his purposes are. And how he wants you to serve him in his body. And how you release yourself to his purposes. And knowing that that labor in the Lord will always be rewarded. It also creates an opportunity for intimacy with him so that his life can continue to flow through us and bring us into increasing fruitfulness for his kingdom and for his purpose. Uh, and so I, I just pray and as many of us who have felt shaken, as many of us who have felt strengthened, whatever has been your state, I think there is an opportunity to ask the Lord to shine this light upon your heart, give you a fresh understanding of where you are and what things are lacking, what things are in a good shape, and not in a sense of condemnation, but so that you can invite a spirit to come and invite his presence to come and fill you afresh. Jesus says, I'm the one who gives you life. As long as you're connected to me, life continues to flow. And as long as we're connected to him, that life flows through us and flows into the community of God's people. And we can then reach out and be a blessing to uh, brothers and sisters, as well as reaching out to the wider community. So I pray a blessing over you as you go into the season. And I pray the Lord will continue to strengthen you, encourage you, challenge you, uh, and pray for greater, uh, more exciting adventures in God as you step into this new season. Uh, it's been such a privilege and, uh, and a really wonderful opportunity to bring us what to you this morning. Uh, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you because the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So let our hearts be blessed by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.